UFC Vegas 83 is coming up this weekend, and guys, today we are going to be taking a look briefly at every fight on the card, and we are going to rank this card. We're going to say, hey, for a fight night card, is this acceptable from the UFC? Is this something good? Can I wait to, I can't wait to watch it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get into the fights, and I'd love for you to hear me out, and then I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Afterwards, we're going to get into it in just a second. Before we do, though, I do want to say hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with too many YouTube channels. Let's get into it. And we're starting the night off with a stinker, guys. We have Ryan DeSantos versus Talita Allen Carr. Honestly, I'm not excited to watch Allen Carr fight at all. This girl cannot fight. She shouldn't be in the UFC. It was a last-minute booking. The UFC needed a fight. But we got to cut him some slack this week because the card was moved from Shanghai and they did lose some stuff. But this is honestly a really, really low-level fight. But then the second fight of the night, guys. Oh, my God. I'm actually looking forward to this fight. More so than most fights on the card. We have Tatsuro Tyra versus Carlos Hernandez. I love watching both of these guys. This is a fantastic matchup. And Tyra has been sitting at a big favorite all week. People are really high on this dude. But I honestly think Carlos Hernandez is going to win this fight. This dude is so underrated. I love watching him perform. Same with Tatsuro Tyra. This is a fantastic fight. Next up, we have another newly added fight. That being Daniel Marcos versus Carlos Vera. And honestly... In my opinion, Daniel Marcos is kind of carrying this fight for me because I'm interested to see what he can do because he's 15-0. He's looked really good so far. He's had one fight where it's like, ah, you know what, that could have gone either way. But other than that, Daniel Marcos looks like he could be something very, very special. I'm excited to see him perform, but it's the problem is Carlos Vera, new to the UFC, 36 years old. I would imagine this is kind of like a pick-me-up for Daniel Marcos, but it's not to say Carlos Vera isn't good. It's just... Uh, it's, I, I think Daniel Marcos will go a little bit further. I, I don't know. I just have a good feeling about him, man. And then we have Stephanie Edgar versus Luana Santos. And for a fight, honestly, guys, this isn't necessarily a good fight. Although, a lot of people, I mean, you can't really complain about watching Luana Santos. The technique absolutely isn't there. But at least, you know what? It's better than what you typically see from the Bantamweight division. It's like, because you have people like Stephanie Edgar. You know what I mean? If you know what I'm getting at. But anyways, this is going to be a low-level fight. But yeah, I mean... Not really going to complain about it too much. Now, this fight, I am very interested in. We have Steve Garcia versus Mel Quizzle Costa. Mostly, I'm interested in the matchup for this fight because this is one of those fights where I don't know how it's going to go. And that makes for a fantastic fight because can Steve Garcia come in, put that heavy pressure, try to get a finish against Mel Quizzle Costa? Or is Costa going to be elusive? Use the teeps, use the calf kicks. Both guys are very, very fun to watch. And I don't know who's going to win. So this is a very, very fun fight. Then we have a fight. Speaking of fights that we don't know how it's going to go. We kind of know how this one's going to go. It's Hansung Park versus Shannon Ross. Shannon Ross at this point in his career just absolutely does not have a chin. And Sung Park has been on an absolute tear. So it's going to be fun to watch Park perform. I would imagine I'd be shocked if Shannon Ross won this fight. But still, it's it's an okay fight. I'm not, I'm not really hating on it. Then we have two fighters that are really fun to watch. I love watching Kanan Song fight, and Kevin Jusset is a very interesting fighter in himself. Beautiful kickboxing to watch, but Song has that danger element that he brings to these fights, and that's why he's always very fun to watch, because he kind of has that Derek Lewis effect, and I don't mean to compare him to Derek Lewis in the sense where <laughs> he has no technique, because he's an okay fighter, right? But he just brings that danger element to any fight, because Kevin Jusset should be the better tactical fighter here. He's a great kickboxer, but Song... He can, he's always live for that KO, and that's what I love about him. I love watching both these guys perform, and this is going to be a fantastic fight. Moving on to the next fight, we have Andre Muniz versus Jun Young Park. This is a great fight. I am very, very excited to watch both of these guys. Andre Muniz is always fun. Jun Young Park is always fun. Nothing else to say here. This is an absolute banger. And then we have two lightweight contenders, two guys that are trying to break into the top 15, but keep not exactly getting there. But this is honestly, in my opinion, this is quite a high-level matchup. We have Nasrat Hakbaras versus Jamie Malarkey. I like watching both these guys perform, especially Nasrat, because we have been seeing great improvements from him. And he's only 28 years old, which is always shocking to me because we've been watching this dude fight forever. Jamie Malarkey had a nice win after a setback, although it was like a little bit of a lackluster performance. But still, both of these guys are still improving. They still have lots of room for improvement as well. And I would like to see where they end up in the division. So this fight means a lot to him. And it always makes a good fight when there's high stakes. And there's definitely high stakes here because both guys, I don't want to say they're in a no-lose position in their career, but it's just like you need to get that win streak going. You need to break in. This is a very, very close fight in my opinion. Nasrat with the edge, but I'm excited to watch this one. I really am. Now, guys, apologies for the change in scenery here, but I was editing, and all of a sudden, of course, this fight fell out as Alan Nascimento is now out of the fight, and Tim Elliott came in to step in. 
While the matchup in itself was very interesting, Tim Elliott is always, always an absolute banger to watch. I can, I don't care who Tim Elliott's going up against. This guy's gritty. This guy's dirty. At 36 years old in the bantamweight and flyweight division, man, this dude puts it on no matter what. So I'm sure Tim Elliott's going to come and want to grapple against Sumadarji, where we have seen a hole in the grappling game. I'm so excited for this fight. This is much better. Hopefully, Tim Elliott's in shape, but I would imagine he's the type of guy to stay in shape regardless. This is a plus in my opinion. Now, guys, whoo, the main event is a banger. Song Yadong versus Chris Gutierrez. I love watching Song Yadong fight. I'm a huge fan of Song Yadong. I love watching the Bantamweight division, especially the top 15-ish guys in the Bantamweight division. Oh, my God. Any one of these guys can beat the champion and the number one contender at any day of the week. I think the division is that highly contested. It has the best skill in the entirety of combat sports. You won't find a better division anywhere. So anytime you have a high-level matchup like this, I'm all in. Anytime you see Bantamweights, I'm all in. I'm ready to watch this fight. I love watching Song Yidong fight. Chris Gutierrez is fun too, but I'm excited for this performance, man. Song Yidong always brings it. There is nothing to not like about his style. This fight is the best on the card for sure. So after taking a look at all of these fights, guys, honestly, the card is a little bit weak, especially for a fight night. I understand the UFC hit some bumpy, a little bit of a bumpy road with the card being moved from Shanghai, but even, even then, it wasn't really that strong. There's a couple fights. Like, I'm excited to watch Tetsuro Taira. I'm excited to watch Song Yidong, but nothing else really makes me go, oh, I can't wait. No matter what, I'm excited to watch a UFC card. I'm one of the biggest combat sports fans out there, so I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy myself. But when it comes to hype, when it comes to comparing this card to other fight nights, it does not nearly stack up. So that's why I got to bring my rating in because I got to imagine like comparing this to other fight cards because honestly, I go into every UFC event with like at least a 9 out of 10 level of excitement. That's just me. I'm just a big fan of the sport. Even if it's not even the UFC, I just like watching fights. I love watching with my family, friends. So I'm going into this comparing it to others' cards. Honestly, guys, I give this one like a 4 out of 10. Honestly, Song Yidong's carrying it. Tatsuro Taira's carrying it. There's not much else that really makes me go, oh man, let's go. Like the Melquizel Costa fight, that definitely piques my interest. But at the same time, I'm not like, I cannot wait to watch Melquizel Costa go in the, in the octagon. You know what I mean? You guys understand? So this is a very weak fight card. Regardless, I will be watching. I will be really, really excited to see it. Let me know what you thought about this card down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here and you enjoy the content, please consider hitting the like button, up on the channel, ton, and subscribe. If you're brand new on the screen right now, if you'd like to continue watching the Clembat channel, there'll be two videos on screen for you to check out. I will see you either there or in the next video, everybody. Take care.